This is an ABC News special report. Good afternoon. I'm David Muir from ABC News headquarters here in New York. And we come on the air this afternoon because we are expecting the president to make a statement just a short time from now on this superstorm, Hurricane Sandy, as it inches closer to landfall. It's already whipping much of the coast. We do have some pictures coming in. These are pictures from the Carolinas this afternoon, the Outer Banks. But this is the scene that's been mirrored up and down the East Coast, and the hurricane is not even here yet. In fact, already at this hour, 36,000 Americans are in the dark. They've already lost their power. This is a Category 1 hurricane, but don't be fooled by the fact that it's only a Category 1. As it approaches shore, it's going to be combining with two other major weather systems. That's why we're calling this a superstorm. And of course, we'll be checking in with Sam Champion in just a moment for the latest on the track. We know at the center of the storm, the winds are right now 90 miles per hour, gusts up to 100 miles per hour. That's just shy of a Category 2. And, of course, we've been tracking this all evening long and into this morning on Good Morning America. And right there you can see the waves churning off the coast. The concern here is that people uh, do not go out in some of these low-lying areas because of the storm surge. We've been hearing this uh, throughout the day today, that that is the biggest fear, that these could be life-threatening storm surges when they come on shore. In fact, I was talking with Ginger Z just before we came on the air where she is in Atlantic City. That's where the eye of the storm is expected to hit. And she's already standing in water, completely flooded out that whole area. And we'll be checking in with her shortly as well. You can see the track there on your screen, that giant system. And, of course, again, the concern is just the, the scope of this. A thousand miles across, you can feel those winds 500 miles in every direction of the eye. And when that makes landfall, it then combines with those two other systems, as I mentioned a moment ago. There are blizzard warnings that have been up in effect. They're expecting not only the winds, the rain, the storm surge, but also snow from this. We're awaiting the president to make comments on this. Uh, and as you may have heard us report earlier in the day and at abcnews.com, the president was to be in Florida today for a campaign stop with former President Bill Clinton, canceling that flying back on Air Force this one to Washington, D.C. We have also learned that Governor Romney, while holding a rally today in Ohio and then in Iowa, will cancel this evening's events and events into tomorrow because of the storm as well. So this is just a week to go before this election, and there's going to be a lot of talk about how this hurricane could affect Election Day. But in the meantime, of course, the real concern, the safety of 50 to 60 million Americans who are going to be in the path of this storm. You're looking at the pictures right there. Those were pictures coming in overnight, and appropriately, some of these towns look like ghost towns. And that is what so many of the authorities had hoped for. In fact, Governor Christie, in his typical uh, blunt fashion, saying, don't be stupid, get out. Uh, and we were watching over the last 24 hours evacuations in several of these low-lying areas, uh, people heeding the warnings. Uh, here in New York, they are really concerned about lower Manhattan. As you might recall, a year ago, it was Hurricane Irene. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment, but here's the president in the briefing. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just received a full briefing from our emergency response teams, including FEMA and agencies that are going to be helpful in the response and recovery efforts. Uh, the Department of Energy, the Department of Transportation, uh, the Department of Health, uh, Homeland Security, and the Department of uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, obviously, everybody is aware at this point that this is going to be a big and powerful storm. And all across the eastern seaboard, I think everybody is taking the appropriate preparations. Uh, I've spoken to all the governors in all these states. Uh, they have issued emergency declarations. Uh, those have been turned around quickly. Uh, here in the White House. Uh, we have pre-positioned assets so that uh, FEMA personnel are working closely with state and local governments. Uh, we're making sure that food and water and emergency generation uh, is available for those communities that are going to be hardest hit. We anticipate that uh, the center of the storm is going to hit landfall uh, sometime this evening. Uh, but because of the nature of this storm, we are certain that this is going to be a slow-moving process through a wide swath of the country, and millions of people are going to be affected. So the most important message that I have for the public right now is please listen to what your state and local officials are saying. Uh, when they tell you to evacuate, you need to evacuate. Do not delay. Uh, don't pause. Don't question. Uh, the instructions that are being given because uh, this is a serious storm and it could uh, potentially have fatal consequences if people haven't act, uh, acted quickly. Uh, the good news is, is that the governors and local officials, I think, have had a few days of preparation. 
There's been extraordinarily close coordination between state, federal, and local governments. And so we're confident that the assets are prepositioned for an effective response in the aftermath of the storm. But keep in mind that for folks who are not following instructions, if you are not evacuating when you've been asked to evacuate, uh, you're putting first responders at danger. Uh, we're going to have to have search and rescue teams uh, in uh, and around uh, multiple states all at the same time. And although we've got Coast Guard and the Department of Defense all positioned, uh, if the public's not following instructions, that makes it more dangerous for people, uh, and it means that uh, we could have fatalities that could have been avoided. Uh, transportation is going to be tied up for a long time, uh, and probably the most significant impact for a lot of people, uh, in addition to flooding, is going to be getting power back on. We anticipate that there are going to be a lot of trees down, uh, a lot of water, and our, despite the fact that uh, the power companies are working very closely with uh, their various state officials and local officials to make sure that they are bringing in as many assets as possible and getting those ready in preparation for the storm, the fact is that a lot of these emergency crews are not going to be able to get into position to start restoring power until some of these winds have died down. Uh, and because of the nature of this storm, that may, make t uh, that may take uh, several days. So uh, the public should anticipate that uh, there's going to be a lot of power outages, and it may take time for that power to get back on. Uh, the same is true with transportation. There are going to be a lot of backlogs. And even after the storm has cleared, it's going to take a considerable amount of time for uh, airlines, uh, subways, trains, and so forth, uh, potentially to get back uh, you know, on schedule, uh, depending on the amount of damage uh, that has occurred. Um, let me summarize just by saying that uh, I'm extraordinarily grateful for uh, the cooperation of our state and local officials. Uh, the conversations that I've had with all the governors indicate that at this point there are no unmet needs. Uh, I think everybody is taking this very seriously. We've got uh, prepositioned all the resources that we need, but right now the key is to make sure that the public is following instructions. For those of you who still need additional information about how to respond, uh, you can go to ready.gov. That's ready.gov, uh, and that website should provide you uh, with uh, all the information that your family needs in terms of how you can prepare uh, for this storm. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to all the people who are potentially affected. Uh, we are extraordinarily grateful for our first responders because they're going to be working 24-7 around the clock nonstop. Uh, and you know, I want to make sure that uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, all those who may uh, end up be dealing with the very difficult uh, a situation over the next several days. Uh, last point I'll make, though. Um, you know, this is going to be a big storm. It's going to be a difficult storm. Uh, the great thing about America is when we go through tough times like this, uh, we all pull together. We look out for our, fr our friends. We look out for our neighbors. Uh, and you know, we set aside whatever uh, issues we may have otherwise to make sure that we respond appropriately uh, and uh, with swiftness. And that's exactly what I anticipate is going to happen here. So I want to thank all the federal teams, state, and local teams that are in place. Uh, I'm confident that we're ready. But I think the public needs to prepare for the fact that this is going to take a long time for us to clean up. Uh, the good news is we will clean up, and we will get through this. What all right? about the impact on the election, sir? Uh, I am not worried at this point about the impact on the election. I'm worried about the impact on families, and I'm worried about the impact uh, on our first responders. Uh, I'm worried about the impact of our, on our economy and on transportation. Uh, you know, the, the election will uh, take care of itself next week. Right now, our number one priority is to make sure that uh, we are saving lives, that our search and rescue teams are going to be in place, that people are going to get the food, the water, the shelter that they need in case of emergency, uh, and that uh, we respond as quickly as possible to get uh, the economy back on track. Long, right. long time. Thank you, everybody. And so there he is, the president in the briefing room at the White House, just a short time after being in the Situation Room, being briefed on this storm. You heard him. I'm not worried about the impact on the election. I'm worried about American families. The election will take care of itself. He did say this is going to be a big and powerful storm. And the two most important words you heard from the president there, please listen. He was talking about authorities all up and down the eastern seaboard and inland. As we know, the storm is going
going to be deep inland as well, uh, asking Americans to listen, uh, the same first responders would be there ready for the call, but to please help them by listening to authorities and to evacuate if you've been asked to evacuate. I want to get straight to ABC's weather editor, Sam Champion, in lower Manhattan for the latest on the track of this storm. And Sam, you and I were talking just before we came on, and those water levels are already dangerously high, and the hurricane hasn't even made landfall yet. Exactly, David. We were a little caught off guard and surprised by how high it was at high tide time uh, this morning at about 8.30. We've got another high tide coming at about 8.30 at night for the battery, which is just about when that storm should be settling on shore. Let's give you a look at the health of this storm system. We'll show you that first with a satellite. You'll look at a deep kind of collected uh, area of clouds that is off the Jersey Shore, and that is still the well-organized center of Sandy, setting record low pressure levels as it develops and continues to sit there. The radar will show you... and. Uh, that this is spinning an awful lot of moisture. Take a look at the yellow and the oranges in the radar, and that's where the heaviest rain is going. And there's snow. The pinks and the white are snow that are going in West Virginia. Also, the mountains of Virginia already, we're seeing those snow uh, systems developing there. Then take a look at the path. There is very little change here, except we've narrowed the focus of exactly where this storm will make landfall. That has a lot to do with how much rain is falling in those areas right now. And you may see local areas north of that taper down the rainfall in the short term. But this storm is going to be on shore for quite some time in Pennsylvania, in western New York State, and even curving its way up toward western Maine and finally ending up on that border with Maine and Canada as well by the time we get toward the end of the week. But where that storm comes on shore is definitely going to be a problem of how it moves water on shore. And our Ginger Z is in Atlantic City right now. Ginger? Thanks, Sam. The scene here in Atlantic City is unbelievable. The water filling the streets and the storm so far away. Inland flooding has already become a problem. We're seeing vehicles stranded up and down. We were asked to leave the boardwalk because it's just that dangerous. And the storm surge hasn't even hit yet. Tonight, between 8 and midnight, I really think it's going to become ground zero of this storm. David? Ginger, thanks so much. We can see the water almost up to your knees there. And, of course, that's where the hurricane is expected to make landfall right there in Atlantic City and not till hours from now, uh, much later this evening, and high tide again around 8 p.m. tonight. So that's going to get much worse. We heard the president there moments ago saying our thoughts and prayers go out to the people who will be affected, millions in the path of this storm. Uh, the president saying this is a time when we look out for our neighbors and our friends. Our thanks to Ginger Z, Sam Champion, the entire extreme weather team will be out all day long. Diane Sawyer leading the team on World News later tonight and for updates throughout the afternoon, abcnews.com, and we'll break back in if needed. Take care. This has been a special report from ABC News.